So when you walked around New York City, like many major cities, you might notice a number of musicians playing either in the street or in the subway. It's a big part of the culture here. This is called busking, where the goal is hopefully to make some money from donations from the general public and appreciation for the music that is being made. In other words, it's kind of like a pre-internet Patreon. Patreon, Patreon. It's actually a pretty decent way of making a living doing what you love. A street musician once told me that they would regularly make several hundred dollars in a given day. So last week, I went busking a couple of times with some of my musical friends to see if we could match that number. All right, I'm here with Ian Barnett. I'm here with Mary Spender. About to busk. So how did we do? Well, not really all that well. Which is that? 16 whole dollars. Oh yeah. I just quit my job. How quickly they have fallen. <laughs> Quite humbling indeed. <laughs> Nine, $14.55. We had to split this cash two ways, so yeah, we didn't really even make minimum wage for an hour's worth of work. We didn't do so well. Why might that be? Could we just not be good musicians? I don't know how to do this. That's entirely possible, but I think there's a little bit more to the craft of busking besides just showing up and expecting people to pay you. I decided to talk to my friend Matt for pointers. He plays trumpet in the band Too Many Zoos, a band that got started busking in New York City. I figured if anybody would know how to busk, it would be him. I think the biggest tip that I would give to anyone who's starting to play in the subway or on the street is to just do it as much as you humanly can. The more you do it, the more people know you. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. Like if you watch Twitch at all and you see these streamers, it's it's like the reason of their success comes from consistency and doing it every day, no matter what, all day, every day. Every day. It's such a grind, man. And also being polite, just kind of respecting the code, the way things go down there. Giving respect, you you deserve it back. I think our game plan right now is that there's this festival thing that's happening in Union Square, and we're gonna post up somewhere, and uh, hopefully nobody kicks us out. You know, typically what will happen is the cops will come up to you and say, hey, do you guys have a permit? And if you don't, they'll ask you to leave, and if you do, they'll be like, all right, cool. <laughs> You know, without a permit, you can't use amplification. Hello. You know, and it's not to say that you can't perform without a permit because we performed without a permit for years. You're more likely to face police or MTA employees that are that will stop you just right. without having a permit. Take one. Take one. Why am I doing this? I'm joking. This is very enjoyable. <laughs> But there's still laws within the permit, too, that you can get stopped for. You can't go technically above, I believe it's 100 decibels. You just gotta keep it at a noise level. But you cannot use amplification without a permit. See they have a permit if the police comes up to you and, and respectfully asks you to stop, say, okay, I understand that your sergeant asked you to ask me to stop. No one wants to be an asshole to anybody else. You gotta quit? Yeah, we gotta quit. Oh. We got stopped for playing with an amplifier, so... I've been replaced by a trombone player. Bait worse than death. Okay, so the reason why we didn't make that much money was because we kept getting stopped because we were amplified, which is mildly frustrating because I can't play my instrument without amplification. Please. So what about getting a permit? Part of the issue with getting a permit is that there's one audition a year. If you don't go physically to that audition, you can't get a permit. Okay, so it sounds like there's a guy playing an acoustic guitar over there. Just to not step on anybody's turf. Do not step on other people's turf. The more you play, the easier it gets, right? It's like lifting weights. If you go to the gym, every day and with lift weights for six hours a day, it's gonna be 10 times easier six months in than it is on the first day. I um, did 15, 15 full days in London in Canary Wharf one time, one Christmas. Yeah, it was hardcore. Because I didn't wow. live in London, so I had to oh, get to London. <laughs> that is hard work, wow. 4 a.m. bus. In 2007, the Washington Post devised a busking experiment with world-renowned classical violinist Joshua Bell. At the time, his solo recitals were selling for $100 a ticket, but the Washington Post would put him in the middle of the Washington Metro during rush hour to see if anybody would stop their busy commute to listen to a virtuoso play. In a banal setting at an inconvenient time, would beauty transcend? So, 
what do you expect? Of course not. Six people out of 1,097 bothered to stop and listen. Only one person recognized who he was, and he made $52.17. The article that was written about this experiment frames this fairly philosophically. If a great musician plays great music but no one hears, was he really any good? The story of how nobody stopped to listen to Joshua Bell has been reworked a bunch of times into we live in a society parables. That violinist? Albert Eins, I, I mean Joshua Bell. But the original article is actually quite good. It won a Pulitzer Prize after all. However, I think there was a glaring omission in the article. Nobody bothered to interview actual street musicians for whom this sort of experience is a daily reality. How might they think about this situation? In the business world, they have obviously, you know, focus groups Well, they'll bring six, seven people in and they say, do you like this cheese pizza or this cheese pizza? Why do you like this cheese pizza and blah, 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 blah. And the subway is essentially that, but on a way grander scale, right? You have these people who are like so brilliantly diverse, <laughs> which is so hilarious. It's so hard to get that. And then you have the ability to perform music for them. And if you're smart, you then can take that information and, and li I'm saying literally look at them. When you're playing on a stage, especially the bigger stages, it's harder to gauge like, oh, these people really like this thing individually. So for us, we would play certain things. And I think all of us were really observant to the crowd and saying, oh, they love this part. They, they absolutely love this part. Let's do that more. Or they, they did not like this song. People left during this song. Let's just cut that song out. This is what the city of New York likes or dislikes. And they're really, really honest about it. I don't care who they are. I hate coming up the escalator at the metro into a wall of amplified music that makes me cringe and that I can't escape. I hate the fact that the noise is so loud that I can't speak with my traveling companion or hear the music of my choice, which is already playing in my earphones. I hate the fact that my taxpayer dollars are supporting this harassment because some pretentious idiot decided that the unwashed masses should be forcibly exposed to his choice of music. There's a time and place for everything. If Joshua Bell was playing on my porch at 2 a.m., I would call the police. The most important thing about being down there is showing respect to the people of New York. The, the, the reality of it is as a performer, you're in a way intruding on their, on their space. When you're on a stage, you don't have to worry about this sort of thing because people presumably have come to see you play. But when you're busking, you're demanding the attention of people that might not be willing or able to give you any attention. When Joshua Bell is on a stage, he is creating art, but when he is down in the Washington Metro, he is a salesman. Salesman of a pretty amazing product, his violin playing. Seriously, check him out if you don't know who he is. But he's a salesman nonetheless. Our one pound coins are coins, not notes in England. So if someone throws in any coins, they are weighted down because otherwise it will blow away. There was a guy who just put in like four pennies and those four pennies were worth like more than everything else because they kept, they weighted all the notes down. So I was like, thank, oh, thank you guy. Uh, also, when I've been busking for, I've never had anyone join me. Yeah. That was so cool. When you saw him sat over there with his saxophone out. Yeah. His saxophone was out. He was so ready. So there is totally, for us at least, a way that we used to do breaking, which was like, we had a nine minute, three song set that we would play. Play for nine minutes and this crowd will build and the crowd will build. You have to stop at a certain point because there'll be 100, 200 people standing there. And if they don't leave, no one else knew will come. It's like you want to fill the glass up all the way to the brim and then be like, and stop. You know, we could play for an hour and a half, but we've now made this into this really condensed nine minute action-packed set, each nine minutes that goes by means a new set of people. Cycling those people in and out of there to get more exposure, to get more cameras on you, to get more money in the bucket. If one person stands there, they might give you $20, but they're not gonna give you $20 twice or three times. 
no matter who it is. So Joshua Bell, virtuoso as he is, does not have the same skill set that seasoned buskers have. People who, one, have the stamina to grind for hours and hours on end, two, know how to judge audience reactions in real time and play music according to those reactions, and three, know how to time sets perfectly with an eye towards making the most money for the longest period of time. The beauty of the Subway Man is like, it's paid rehearsal. Dude, for the first three years as a band, we never had a rehearsal. We went down and just improvised. Take advantage of it, man. I always make sure that I have a wall behind me so that no one can like creep. Um, but I did used to busk for hours and hours and hours and hours in the same place because sometimes I would get paid to busk too oh, by is councils. That, is that a thing? That can be a thing. Oh, wow. And so like with anything worth doing, your ability to busk, your ability to make a little bit of money for yourself doing what it is that you love is purely based upon the amount of time, energy, practice, and work that you're willing to put into it. Yes, you can read lists all day long on the internet of busking tips, the same way that you can read lists of bass playing tips, but until you actually start doing those things, you won't get any better at them. So what are you waiting for? People are people are people, no matter where they are in the world. People love good live music. People love music. It's it's a second form of communication that almost everyone in the world speaks. If you're good and you're confident in your art, people will respond to that, typically happily.